Cool. So, hey, I'm Peter Bashai. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I have kind of a background in data visualization, uh, weird design things, uh, 3D stuff sometimes when I waste a lot of energy, uh, and sometimes putting some online things like D3 Interpolate Pass and uh, use query params recently on the open source community. For some reason, science let me design a cover of uh, some of the research we did in our lab on the spread of false rumors. Uh, I don't think they'll ask me to do it again, but <laughs> that was something. So. To tell you uh, how I came to Boston, I did a basketball visualization online. Uh, the Boston Celtics said, hey, that looks pretty cool. Why didn't you come do that for us privately? Uh, and I said, OK. So I quit my PhD and moved here. Um, that was about four years ago now. And I thought, wow, life is really fun when I get to hang out in the arena for every home game and program, or just watch. But it was maybe too fun. Uh, so I was like, let's leave. That's too easy. Um, so eventually I found my way to Cortico. Uh, Cortico is a nonprofit uh, in the MIT Media Lab, and that's where I lead the engineering and design teams. Uh, we're a very small company, <laughs> but we do tech for good. Uh, I want to tell you uh, a little bit about what we do and what motivated me getting into this kind of mapping stuff before I get into actually showing you guys some cool map stuff. Uh, so bear with me as I talk about this. We are hiring uh, to join our small team, uh, local or remote. So the main project we're working on right now, which I think is important for our uh, current state of society, is called the Local Voices Network, or LVN. And the mission at Cortico, it's only going to be a couple minutes, <laughs> uh, foster, is to foster a constructive public conversation in communities and in the media that improves our understanding of each other. And so we kind of see the world right now as this kind of divisive place, and the public conversation is kind of at its worst that it's ever been. And we're trying to find ways to try to address that uh, through kind of fighting against divisive stereotypes and looking at lived experience. And so what we've done is we've built this device we call a digital hearth, because it glows, and people gather around it to talk. Um, but it's basically this IoT device that has a Raspberry Pi in it, a speaker, a bunch of microphones, and it records people talking. It has a little React app uh, and this wedge that I'm not going to talk to you about that controls it. But basically, people come talk around it, and they share their kind of hopes and concerns of their community and like some experiences from a first-person perspective. Um, we take all that, we upload it to the cloud, transcribe it, run natural language processing and machine learning on it, and then provide these insights back to the community and then to local media and to local government with hopes that we can kind of elevate underheard voices and get a kind of more even ground for everyone that lives in their local area. But OK. The way this works is we have these hearths and we have these hosts. So we have a bunch of volunteers. We have maybe like 60 or 70 volunteers out in Madison, Wisconsin right now. Uh, and they're trained to host conversations. And they take one of these hearths that are hosted uh, in a library. And so we have, we're partnered with libraries, um, which is how this whole thing comes together. So uh, at Cortico, we're founded by this guy, Deb Roy. I don't know if anyone's any, ever seen this TED Talk. Does anyone know it by any chance? Some nods, a lot of shaking heads, but it's amazing. This TED Talk is unbelievable. I had nothing to do with it, unfortunately. But uh, it's really amazing. It's basically, he did something totally crazy, which was install microphones and cameras throughout his entire house and record the first four years of his child's life and how the child developed speaking. Uh, and you see, he's able to construct like this growth of the word water from a mumble. Uh, and along with this talk, which is 20 minutes long and well worth your time, it's like amazing visualizations in there. And so when Deb comes and he's like, hey, about those libraries, Peter, what if we, uh, what if we try to like, visualize that and like, try to show people the growth of LVN? What if we show them like, a hearth in every library? Can you do that? And I'm like, oh, Deb, sure, I'd love to. Um, <laughs> and then I go run for help. But uh, he's, he's, got, you know, he's a very creative guy, super smart guy, too. Um, so I was like, I got this, though. I got this. And here it is. right? I was like, OK, we get the globe. I show everyone where all the libraries are. And boom, we put a hearth in each one. And so I go show Deb. I'm like, Deb, look, I'm done. What do you think? And that's the talk, actually. So thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, he wasn't too impressed with that, as neither are you, I assume. So uh, he was like, you know what? Why don't we try it again? Uh, and I realized, OK, maybe we have to use some real data. And so it turns out uh, there's like 20,000-ish 20, 20, libraries in America. Uh, which is a good amount. <laughs> uh, it's a good amount to draw if you want it kind of to be responsive. You could probably get away with like some canvas things. SVG is probably too slow. But when there's cool tech out there that does cool maps, why not try to use it? Because uh, you might as well learn while you're at work. So let's talk a bit 
that's kind of what motivates me learning about maps and doing this animation thing. Uh, and so I'm going to go through uh, for the rest of this talk. We're going to do something risky, and maybe we'll all learn something by the end. It might be that you should have left after the first talk. But uh, we're going to try doing some live coding of this map that's going to try to visualize roughly 20,000 libraries. Well, doing some baby steps along the way. So what do we need? If you've never done any, has anyone done map programming before or maps on, on the internet much? Oh, wow, good amount of you guys. OK. Um, so I'm just going to very basically cover some, just cover some, some basics. So the things that you need if you're using a slippy map, which is what we're really familiar with, which is those ones you can click and drag and kind of zoom and it loads tiles and stuff like that. You can get away without using those if it's something really basic. But for the most part, you choose a tile provider. In this case, we're going to use Mapbox. It's a little bit more affordable than Google if you end up reaching a scale that requires paying. Um, plus, it has lots of cool integrations with the software that I wanted to use. Uh, the kind of basic utilities you might run into when doing map programming, uh, these are three of them. TopoJSON may be a bit less important than the other ones, but GeoJSON is like the language that all geo uh, <laughs> data, well, not, I shouldn't say all geo data, but like a, a common form of formatting geo data. And it's pretty verbose, but it's, it's used commonly across the internet. Uh, TopoJSON is a more effective way of, or it's not more effective, it's just more compressed. There's, it just doesn't store as much. It more efficiently stores the same data as GeoJSON, but it's not as supported by different libraries. So it's like about 80% smaller than GeoJSON. So if you're ever sending GeoJSON across the wire, you might consider top of JSON and then expanding on the client. And TurfJS is kind of like Lodash for Geo. It just gives you a ton of functions for working with Geo data. It's super useful to know about. Um, I'm not going to go through these functions, but uh, you get the idea. It's like working with latitudes and longitudes and GeoJSON is just a pain in the ass. Uh, latitude and longitude doesn't work nicely like normal x, y coordinates do. So it's handy having these helpers. And to give you an idea what uh, GeoJSON looks like, uh, the main thing is there's geometries and features. So a geometry could be like a point or a polygon. And it's a collection of coordinates, which are longitude, latitude. Uh, and that's like a really tricky thing to learn at first, because you're always like, we always say latitude and longitude, right? It's more natural. But the reason you can remember it is that, think of it as x, y. Longitude is for x and latitude is for y. And so just remember the order is always longitude, latitude. Features are like geometries. They just nest them inside, but they allow you to add additional properties, like maybe the square footage or the name or whatever you want. But we're not going to get into that, really. This is just like a really the most basic possible GeoJSON primer. So getting to React. When you're using React, these are the libraries I decided I wanted to use. Um, React MapGL is a wrapper around the Mapbox GLJS API uh, that lets you do it in declarative React style and also provides a number of help, helpful layers and overlays to make build, working with maps more easy. And uh, DeckGL is also by Uber. They apparently have a, a strong need for visualizing data on maps um, that uses WebGL to like, really power big data layers. And if you ever go to this website, uh, you should. It's, there are lots of cool examples there. And the example we end up may not look as cool as some of theirs, but it'll be helpful, I think. I put the code up for the end product already. It's commented on in the meetup uh, as well, this link. But it's up there if you want to take a look at it and decide whether you want to stick around. But here are the, here are the steps that we're going to go through. We're going to start from basically nothing. Uh, we're going to add a slippy map, configure it with Mapbox, get some components that can navigate it. So we'll have some buttons that we can click to navigate around the map externally. We'll use an SVG layer to try to show libraries in Massachusetts and then try doing some animation with React Spring. Has anyone used React Spring? Has it, ooh, one person. Wow, that's interesting. React Spring, how about React Motion or like, what are the other? Some people, okay. Anyway, it's like a very common or maybe it's the most hyped uh, animation library for, for React, but it, I'll just show some basics of using it. Then we'll switch to using DeckGL to show all 20,000-ish points. Um, eventually, we'll try a couple different layers in DeckGL, the GeoJSON layer, an arcs layer, which is really cool and probably gets a lot of hype just because how it looks. Um, so if you want to impress people quickly, you can use that, which is what I usually want to do. So highly recommended. Uh, and then lastly, we'll try doing some animating with a custom version of the arcs layer and React Spring. It's a lot of stuff. So I guess we should start. OK. And I won't feel bad if y'all it's like, geez, this, you can t yell at me if I'm doing something dumb or if it's too slow. So let's uh, first start off by making sure we can see what's going on. Is that font big enough? Please tell me that font is big enough. Well, you, there's front rows at. What? Bigger. Bigger. Oh, my God. Can't you just move closer? 
Okay. <laughs> okay, it's fair. Hey, I, I, we, can, we can argue as well. It's going to be good. Okay, so here's what we're starting with. Look at this. Sweet. It's our map app. It's just the emoji. Um, so we're starting off. This is just a React, create React app. I deleted serviceworker.js, notably. Um, <laughs> any other changes I made? Let's see, there's like some CSS in here just to put some buttons on the page. I have this secret folder that we won't talk about. Um, in here, I have an environment variable that sets my Mapbox access token. This is needed just so you can actually render the tiles. Um, what else we got? And we have a CSV data file in here that we're gonna, this is where all the libraries are coming from, which includes their latitude and longitude. All right. So first thing was, okay, Godspeed to me. Okay, let's start off with drawing a map. So we're gonna need a map component. Let's just start, assume it's gonna need a few things. Uh, we'll make it the full screen. So width height equals 100 VH. Okay, so feel free to yell. Okay, this is all looking good. That's not gonna compile. Okay, map.js. Okay, so in here, Let's close that. Okay, width, height. Here we go. We're going to import actually the default from React MapGL. And we're just going to render this. So, what do we get when we do this? Width equals width. Pretty exciting. Let's see. Oh, we get that's not very good. Okay. Hey, we got a map. Okay. Off to a good start. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it live. Okay, so, but we can't do anything with it, so don't clap too much. Okay, we can't, we can't click, we can't drag, we can't see anything, but it's a map and it fills the screen, so it's a start. So the thing about um, maps in, in React MapGL is they, they take view states, which are these kind of nice bundles of information. Um, Here's an example one. This is a subset of one, but they're gonna, I just predefined some locations. Uh, they have latitude, longitude, the zoom level, and this cool stuff called pitch and bearing. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of provide these to say this is where you should start off looking at. So I'm just gonna make this uh, a prop that it takes right now, and I'll just give it another one. I can't remember what the, the order of writing that. So we'll say view state equals view state, right on change, one of these. Okay, let's just make that equal. Okay, so we don't know what those props are gonna do yet, but let's go into app and we'll say, okay, we need view state to be something, right? And this one's gonna be uh, handle change view state, whatever. So we're gonna use hooks. How many people have used hooks here? Ah, half the audience. So hooks, well, they're not too, they're, they're a little fancy, but here we're just gonna go through some basic stuff. We're gonna use it for storing state. So we're gonna have set view state. This is just gonna be a react view state. And we'll start off with locations.coolidge. And where is locations coming from? Uh, oh, I already have it in Borden. Look at me, working ahead of myself. And we just need one more thing, which is to be able to have a handler. Now, React MapGL is a bit weird. Uh, maybe not weird, but it, it, it has a, its callback uses a nested object. So we're gonna say, we can't just pass the setter directly. Uh, we're gonna say, okay, it's gonna say view state. See, it's nested. Uh, set view state, view state. Okay, so it's just this. All we've done is wired in our initial view, which is at Coolidge, right? And we have a handler that says it should update. And if I did that right, okay, we're looking at Coolidge, right? So there's Coolidge corner right here in the middle. And we can now, we can now zoom in and out. Cool, so it's not too bad. I mean, it's a little bit of boilerplate, but the reason why I'm actually gonna use the, the view state stored in app as opposed to in map is that I want to have other components be able to change it. Like I, don't, I want it to be a controlled component. I don't want it to be uncontrolled. So what I'm gonna do now is like, okay, well, what if I add some buttons that, that can make it navigate to those locations I, I had listed before, right? So, why don't we create another div over here? I have, this is where my sneaky, my really shoddy CSS is gonna show up. So let's just go over my locations object, right? And we'll say, let's just, actually I just don't need to, let's just return a button. Okay, key is gonna be key, on click. Well, I'll get to that in a second. And we'll say, okay, it's gonna be key. Right, so all I've done here is now I got these buttons on the side, okay, they don't do anything yet. But they each represent, if you recall, 
one of these objects, right? One of these view states. And what I want to say is, like, when I click it, let's just set the view state to that. So we can't use our, our uh, we can't use our handle change thing, but I'm going to get ahead of myself here and I'm going to say, let's say handle fly to uh, destination. Given a destination, let's just, let's say set view state. Uh, I'm going to do something here, which is a bit strange maybe. But I only want to, I want to be able to say like, if I only give a latitude and longitude, just fly to there. So like, let's merge the current view state with just the changes I want. And let's do that as a fly to. And so now I can say, okay, handle fly to, and my on click can just be uh, handle fly to, lo oops, locations at key, right? Everything looking good. So I can come in here now. And, oh, I mentioned earlier, there's this cool stuff you can do with Mapbox. Um, which is you can adjust the pitch. So if you hold the option button, you can do this really sweet stuff where you like make it 3D uh, and rotate it around, which I think is really cool. So these things, uh, you can see as I click them, they're just jumping to the different, they're jumping to the different locations, right? Okay, it's not that exciting, but this is basic, right? So now the next thing we wanna do, I think, is make it animate um, as one would. And luckily, uh, React MapGL makes this pretty easy. We can come in here and we can say, okay, transition duration, two seconds, okay? So I'm just adding transition duration to my fly to handler. And it's just adding that into that view state, that fancy view state object. And it says, oh, I know what to do when you do that. So I come over here, oh, I'm already on Coolidge. If I click Boston, ooh, we get a nice fancy 3D kind of angle, right? That's what you showed a dev and you're like, huh, you like it? Uh, <laughs> um, and so now we have these things. So this is cool, it's, it's pretty good, but if I go fly from Boston, let's say, into, actually, yeah, Boston to New York, ooh, that wasn't so nice. I mean, sure, we had to load tiles along the way, um, and there's some cool stuff you can do as service workers, actually, um, to cache the tiles along the way. Uh, but I've only done that once, and I didn't feel comfortable. Uh, okay, so this is kind of a weird animation. What it's doing is it's linearly interpolating from one spot to the other. And now normally what you see in like, well, I don't know what normal is. I don't know why I think it's normal, but uh, you like zoom out and then you zoom into another spot. That's kind of the fly to. That should be trademarked, I guess. Maybe it is. Uh, so the way to make it do that, uh, there's these fancy things called interpolators, and the default one is linear. Uh, we'll say new fly to interpolator, and we'll just say, hey, we know what that is, even if you don't. Um, let's just import it. React map GL, okay. Good enough for me. So I just added, so sorry, I probably moved too quickly there, but all I did was add into the handle fly to this other key, right? It, that's it, these two lines now, now we have some sweet, possibly, uh, interpolation between these situations. So I'm in Boston, or I'm almost in Boston, and now I'm in Boston, and I'm gonna fly to New York like we just did. But now, it's doing the kind of, ooh, look at that. Dev, I worked for days on that. You know, like, two lines, but I had to read a lot, okay. So, we were, we're in academia, sort of, right? So reading's cool. Um, all right, cool. So we did it. That was like step one. Oh my God, you're like, Jesus, it's gonna take a while. Um, how y'all doing? Good, good. High energy, okay. Um, oh shoot, what's step two? Okay, now we're gonna look, do some actual data stuff, right? Um, let's draw some libraries. That's what we're all here for, reading and libraries. I'm promoting the good things today. Okay, so. Have you been to local libraries, by the way? They're super nice. I was surprised. I just moved to Coolidge Corner. Um, real nice. OK, so we're going to load some data. Another hook thing here. Uh, we need some, some state to hold. So let's just do set libraries. Sorry, it's all in one component, Adam. Don't get mad. Uh, OK. You can start off with an empty array. And we're going to say, OK, we need a, an effect. So on, on mount, this is the same as uh, component did mount, let's say, because I'm just being lazy. Maybe component demand and component did update, but I'm just saying what it mounts essentially. Uh, go fetch this data, and I'm going to leverage my background in data viz uh, and say I have I have CSVs. Help me D3, um, and so D3 is going to say, okay, fine. If you make me uh, CSV, I, I kind of hear it always arguing with me in my in my coding habits. Okay, so. Basically, this is just a, a fetch wrapper, okay? And it's gonna give, I, I provide some function that's gonna say for each row in the CSV, like, do this transformation instead. Um, okay, I wanted to just return an object. 
I'm going to say, OK, it should have an ID. OK, I'm just going to make the index the ID. Geez, that tooltip is really aggressive. Um, state is going to be D at state. And then we're going to do everyone's favorite um, way to convert a string to a number, which is putting the plus sign in front of it. Um, longitude, imagine that. Uh, D latitude. OK, so that's it. I'm just going to do this. And because you never know if you did anything right in this world, we're just going to log it out. Uh, OK. Oh boy, now I'm console logging in a live talk. OK. Ooh. Oh, what do we do? Set libraries is not, never used. Thank you, ESLint. You're the best. So let's actually add something here. We're going to say then uh, libraries. Let's just, I'm just going to be a little paranoid here. I, I actually don't even know if I need to do this, but I'm just going to make sure the libraries that we have have positions. Um, D dot position at zero doesn't equal null, and D dot position at one doesn't equal null. OK, cool. It's too bad prettier has the line light so long. And then I'm going to say, uh, then set libraries. OK? So I just wasn't actually s saving it to state. So here I'm fetching. OK, it's all boring. Everyone knows how to fetch stuff. But we're saving into state. Now, OK, we have 26,000 libraries. If we expand one of these things, OK, cool. There they are. They just, they, they're very simple, right? They're just objects with a little latitude, longitude, the state, and the ID. OK, boring. I know. Let's move on. So. What I want to do next is, cool, I'm going to pass these into my map component. I'm going to say, OK, now you care about libraries, did you know? Um, OK, now I care about libraries. Let's do it. Um, what should we do with the libraries? Oh my gosh. OK, so let's, let's limit ourselves. I said we're going to start with SVG. So I'm going to say libraries mass is going to be react.useMemo. Oh man, we're going ham on the, the hooks. But um, this is just saying, don't compute this more than you have to. Uh, this one we're going to say, uh, yeah, state just Massachusetts libraries, and only recompute this if libraries changes. OK, that's what that says. So OK, we have libraries in Massachusetts. We want to draw something. Now, this is where we get into using some of the cool parts. Um, OK, you're like, you should have started with the cool parts. OK, so uh, SVG overlay. Um, what we're going to do is use this thing called an SVG overlay, which is really nice. Has anyone ever written SVG code before? Eh, it's kind of just like the DOM. Like, you know, you throw some tags out there. It's basically the same. We're going to draw a circle, and a G tag is basically a div. It's a group. Um, I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to create a new component in the same file. Uh, and it's going to take in a couple properties. Let's call it libraries and radius. OK. And let's have it just return this one thing. SVG overlay, redraw equals redraw. And I'm going to save you. Ooh, what's redraw? Oh, good point. OK, so redraw. Let me do const. OK, redraw is equal to. This is now a React Map GL thing, which is saying, oh, this is React Map GL wants redraw. It provides a very handy function, or function sorry, called project. And so remember that all these things are latitudes and longitudes, right? And we need to show them on 2D. And we're dragging this map around. And what that latitude, longitude maps to can change depending on a whole ton of things. And so that's just called map projection. And so we need to convert our latitudes and longitudes into x, y positions. So the easy way to do that is just say, well, first let's just, we're returning, um, this is our redraw. So this is going to go inside of an SVG component. And we'll say, OK, for each of the libraries, um, what do we want to do? Let's just say a circle. Key is going to be lib.id. CX is going to be, oh, this is where I need to do some fancy stuff. OK. Right. I was just talking to you all about projecting, and then I wasn't going to do it. Um, X, CY is going to be Y, and R is going to be radius. OK. <coughs> Nothing too nerve wracking, even if you never wrote SVG. Uh, so here we're just going to do something lib.position. So this is taking that latitude longitude tuple, and it's going to, oops, very helpful tooltip, thank you. Um, it's going to convert it from latitude longitude to X and Y for us to then render a circle. CX, CY is just the center of the, the circle, center of the, in the X position and the Y position. And it's going to draw it, in theory, on the screen. So this is our simple overlay that's now drawing SVG with map aware coordinates. It's not too complicated. Um, if we come into here now, we have to say, how do I use it? Well, the way React Map GL works is you just make it a child. Um, so I'm just going to say, OK, SVG, SV overlay example. And we have libraries is equal to libraries mass, thank you. Uh, and radius is equal to, I don't know, 15. OK, wow, I haven't looked at the screen in a while. Do you think it's going to work? OK, let's look. OK, hey, 
pretty cool, pretty cool. We got, we got circles for days. Let's click Massachusetts, let's zoom out. Oh my God, it's Massachusetts. Um, hey, they even put a library on, what is that? Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, does anyone know? No one knows. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> going there in a few months, right? Okay, so here's our, here's our thing, it works pretty good. You know, I just, I gotta say my favorite color when I'm doing these things, it just keeps me happy. I gotta just add a little color to this. I like to use tomato. I don't know why, I don't know who named these things. I would like to know who named these things to be honest, but like, anyway, it's a very pleasant color. So now we know we're really doing it. Okay, so we got the, we're drawing data on a map. It's drawing, we can click and move. We can even go 3D, like do this weird thing. It's sweet, right? That project function looks so innocent, but hey, it's doing some work. Um, so, we're going to do some cool shit to this now. Excuse my language, got excited. Okay, so what we want to do is, let's see if we can just toggle this on and off. So like one of the cool parts of having the map as a separate component is like we can control it externally, right? So let's go back into our big app, mega component, make it bigger. Um, and let's just make another state, stateful thing. It goes react.use state 15, okay. Uh, and let's do handle toggle radius. Right, and we'll just say this is going to be uh, set radius. If radius is greater than zero, make it zero. Otherwise, I don't know, some random number. I don't know, how about that? How about that? So this is just some random toggle that'll either turn our circles off or draw them with a bigger radius, right? Now we have to make radius uh, a prop to our, our map and we need some button that's going to call that handler, right? Now this is just standard React. Uh, handle toggle radius, okay, cool, we'll call it radius, right? So we have a button, we have some state, it just toggles things on and off, and now it's being passed as a prop to make our map care about that. We had some radius over here, okay, that's all cool, and I just said radius was 15, let's change that to a prop, okay? All right, living the dream. So let's see, does it work? We have a new radius button, hey, let's hit it, okay. So now we're redrawing our circles, right? You're like, dude, that was lame. Why did you even spend time doing that? But it's the setup. Um, so let's go and introduce some animation. And I want to show you, like, this is all just kind of basic. You can do this with any React component, right, so far. There's nothing, like, scary and map-like in here. So we're going to do something scary and bring in React Spring. Uh, God rest our soul. I think that's how I import it. Um, and this is just to make it animate. You can think of, uh, so linear interpolation, like you're going from zero to one over like two seconds, like it's gonna slowly move between those values every 16 milliseconds telling it to redraw. Spring physics are like all their age right now. Get into it, I guess. Um, but they're like, hey, instead of setting a duration, just be like the spring, it has this much resistance. Uh, anyway, it looks cool, so they're probably right. Um, so we'll say from, this is the syntax for this. So I'm gonna say from, let's say radius is zero. So it kind of like comes in the first time, but not that we'll see it, but you can be helpful. Uh, and let's go to whatever the current radius value is. Now this thing takes as a child, uh, since we're using the render props API here, cause I don't, the hooks thing, I don't know. It's not for me. I don't like hooks. No, no I do, it's fine. Don't quote one by it's recorded. Oh God. Uh, we're hiring. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Um, here we go. What am I hitting the wrong buttons? Okay, I don't need that one. Okay, so we're in here, spring props. Okay, basically what this does is inside there, there's like the interpolated radius value. And so we can just use that one instead of this one. Uh, okay. Who knows how the hell it works? I kind of know, but it doesn't matter. Uh, let's come out here now. So we're out here. What happens if I click this? Oh, now you're talking. Now we just spend the rest of the talk clicking this button. And I know it would be cooler, but it could be cooler. I mean, it would be cool. It is cool, but it could be cooler. So I have my goodie bag, right? And I'm all about that. So let's import this thing I call goo from goo. And I'm just gonna, I don't know, why don't we just put a little goo around this thing? So goo is this like super trendy effect from three years ago, um, which is where I live. Uh, and so now if we fall out, out to, to Massachusetts, we got this goo effect, right? And we're like, Deb, check it out, we're like a virus. Um, we're like infiltrating Massachusetts and he's getting hyped, but he doesn't know why. Uh, so that's cool, right? Anyway, goo is like interesting. If you're ever curious to do it, just like Google goo SVG and like click the first link that comes up and then read it or just go to that spot that you know it is and copy and paste. Um, right, so like, anyway, it's just this, this thing. It's a filter, okay. Copy and paste. Cool, or just look at my repo because it's already there, right? Hey, salt. So, okay, we did it. We did, we did some cool stuff, right? How are y'all doing? Should we continue? Yes. 
Okay, let's continue. Should I continue? You know I was bedridden this weekend with a cold? That's why I'm doing the live coding because I didn't have time to put slides again. Oh, hey. Um, so how would, it, how would this perform if it was something more, uh, if we had more points to draw and we draw, uh, like for example, right now it's libraries, but what if you wanted to do trash cans in Massachusetts? Trash cans? Like, out of oh my God. Like like <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Now that's where we're going to get to DeckGL. And we're gonna get, you want to see how this performs right now, even with just 26,000 libraries? So this was, there's like 900 libraries in Massachusetts. And so I was like, I'm going to save y'all from this. And I was like, let's just do the Massachusetts one, right? But now I'm like, OK, just draw them all. You can do it. Uh, do I, I should probably plug in, right? I'm going to run out of battery. OK, we did it. It's still going. It's like, come on, I can do it. All right, I clicked the USA button, by the way. All right, there it goes. There it goes. So um, of course, I do have the goo effect on, which increases the performance penalty. But you know, um, not so good in SVG, right? And that's only 26,000 points. It's like, I can't even use this. I can't, I can't impress Deb with that, which is my main goal in life. Um, so let's go and move on to DeckGL. Great segue. It's like you set me up. Um, OK, so let's, 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 uh, let's get rid of this guy. Whew, man, goodbye. It's like giving, saying goodbye to your child as he goes to college. OK, so all right, we got all, all these things now. I'm like, oh, you want to draw a whole bunch of these points, right? So why don't we move into DeckGL? DeckGL is so cool, man. When you see this stuff, you're like, wow, I know Uber is kind of like this evil place, but wow, their DataViz team was legit until uh, the head of DataViz moved on to Mapbox like a few weeks ago. But he's a super nice guy. So Mapbox is still cool. Um, OK, so import DeckGL from, oh, geez, I sure hope this is right. Yeah, we're doing it. OK, DeckGL. So what do we do now? Well, so DeckGL is also similarly, can be applied. There's like three different ways you can initialize DeckGL. You don't even have to do it in React. You can do it in, it's like very flexible, which is, makes the documentation very th long. Uh, but this is one way that works for integrating both the React MapGL ov overlays, like the SVG and HTML or Canvas and the DeckGL stuff. So I do it this way. Um, it's very simple. In this case, like we put the same stuff. Uh, and it takes this fancy thing called layers. Um, that's it. We're going to say, OK, const layers. It's just an empty array. So all we did was we added in this line. And it's not going to do anything. So it's not like some magic box. It's just going to be like, your map is sweet now. No. So, but i just show you. It still works, right? OK, cool. Nothing's broken. Now, what we want to do, first thing I said I'd do, I think, was draw a point of all the libraries. So let's do that. So this, the way uh, DeckGL works is it has these, a bunch of layers that it comes with, and it's open source, so you can always take the layers and modify them to do whatever you want. Uh, it supports custom layers as well, and it's pretty cool when you get into that level. Uh, we won't get too deep into that today. Thank God, right? It's getting late. OK, this one, this one. OK, so all we do is say, OK, here's an ID for it. I think it needs one. Really don't know. Uh, data is going to be libraries. Uh, and what do we need? Get radius. Things are going to get weird here. Let's say we, we, had a, we had a prop that has a radius, right? So let's, let's call that. So radius, in this case, now we're getting to DeckGL. It's a bit different. Uh, you would have noticed when we were doing the SVG overlay, like the circles didn't change size, right? They didn't change size as you zoomed in and out. It just stayed the same. Um, with DeckGL layers, your sizes are encoded in meters. Um, so they will change as you zoom in and out, which can be desirable or not. Uh, and so what I'm going to say is, let's take our radius and multiply it by 500, because I looked at it earlier and it worked. Uh, uh, and we're going to say, you know what, don't let them get to fill my entire screen. Uh, let's max them out at 15 pixels. And let's say their fill color should be, because you know tomato is such a good color and you memorize the RGB. Uh, let's say it's that. Okay, so. Uh, we added DeckGL now. Wow, it loaded all those libraries that fast. Hey, that looks like tomato. Man, nailed it. I just tried to memorize it before coming on stage. Um, OK, so now if we come out to USA, wow, it's doing it. Sweet, look how easy that was. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, well, where did it go? Fly back. OK, and it can change stuff while, I'm, while it's navigating, right? So I'm like telling it to do a whole bunch of stuff all the time. Well, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? That was pretty, pretty straightforward. So now it's like, well, but now it's hidden in WebGL land. What if I wanted to do something with these circles? They're like, yo, we got you. We got you. Don't you worry. And so I say, just pickable, true. I just want to be able to click it. OK, so let's say, OK, pickable, true, fine. I don't know what the hell that does, but I'll take it. And I know this has some gnarly DeckGL style thing in here. And I'm just going to say object is what I want. And I say console.log 
object, right? Uh, uh, whatever, that'll work. Okay, so now we're here. In theory, I can click one of these things. Hey, it says like, oh, you click this library, right? Cool, and if I come over here and I click this one, Pen Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, nailing it. Okay, so hey, it's clickable, but you're like, I can't even tell what you're mousing over, can we? I want some nice CSS transition, you know, whatever. Like, well, I can get you pretty far all the way with just this fancy, you know, you gotta be happy when every, any prop has a prefix auto. It's like, damn, thank you. It's like Christmas came early when that happens. And so like here now I'm just hovering, and it's like, ah, oh, we got you hover colors. Look at that. Nothing. One line, of, one, one little prop, one little Boolean. And now we got this kind of interaction. So that can get you pretty far, to be honest, right? Like, and you can do anything you want on those clicks, right? You can even modify the map. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, you can even change those colors. The, the amount of props this thing takes is, a, you know, it's going to fill my two screens, three screens. But uh, cool. So that's the scatterplot layer. Now I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. Now let's switch. Uh, let's switch. Oh, we're not done yet. Oh, no, we're not done yet. We're not animating. Oh, my God. That was the thing. We had sweet animations with the SVG. We're not going to get the goo. Sorry. I mean, it's possible, but I'm not going to write that shader. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in animation. Now you're probably thinking, oh, how's it going to do this? It's going to be a pain in the ass. And I got news. It's not. It's not. Okay. Those guys at DeckGL at Uber, man, this is where they're putting all their money, I guess. But um, should be <laughs> poor drivers, but hey, data viz. Um, okay. Transitions going to say get radius. Okay, 1,000. One, 1, this is a, put in a duration. I'm saying if radius changes, let's just put a transition one one second. Okay? Huh? hey -o. Sort of. Oh, am I doing something dumb still? Well, this is be the first failure of, oh, you know, I've been doing some hot reloads, so I don't know if that's going to be causing some issue, but um, Ah, there you go. Oh, that's because it has the min pixels, and it's 500 times whatever our circle radius in meters, or the max pixels. So actually, that circle was gigantic and just being drawn. So anyway, at the full zoomed out level, you can see there's some kinks to be worked out when you're using this kind of sizing approach. But there it is. And you're like, ah, OK, but the spring, what about the spring physics? What about the spring physics? Uh, they allow you to get a little bit more complicated here. You can say duration should be 1,000. And easing should be ease out back. Can you just do it for me? No, okay. Oh, it's because it's ease back out. Whoops, okay. Ease out back is like the Australian easing, okay. Uh, oops. Hey, someone use a type out here, okay. Okay, so now we're using this easing function from D3. Okay, I turn this off. And what you should see is it gets a little, it gets a little bounce on the way on, it gets a little too big and then it shrinks, right? Wow, it's like a Rolls Royce. I don't know why I said that. Um, cool. Okay, so we got animation back, we got easing, we have duration, we have click interaction, all that, and it's just read the docs, that'll take you the time it took to, you know, figure this out, or just look at this example. But it's, not, it's pretty straight, it's pretty, not that much code to do all that. And to get it performant, right? You just kind of did all, the, you just did this. And you're living the dream, making maps with a ton of points. And this thing, this thing, you're like, what else can I do? And you're gonna be like, why is he showing me this dumb thing? Maybe I shouldn't show you this, but you come look at the examples they have on their website and they're like, oh, you wanna see more points? You wanna see more points? And they're like, oh, cool. Um, the scatter plot layer that they draw, by the way, looks like this, um, which is like a ton of points, right? Uh, and it's pretty good. So, is this it? No. It basically is, though, right? <laughs> every person, each dot represents 10 people. Nailed it. Uh, every family is about 10 people big, right? Okay. Okay, so we're doing good. We're almost done. We're almost through the night. Uh, I wanted to show some cool stuff before we go because the arcs like really get a lot of buzz. Maybe I'm just the one who gives them buzz because when I saw them for the first time, I was like, damn, that's, that's cool. Um, before we do that, I, I mentioned all this stuff about TurfJS, so I'm going to show you GeoJSON just because I felt like I should. Um, GeoJSON layer, and this is going to take just a few seconds, but um, things get a little faster from this, this way out. Uh, line string. Ooh. Turf slash helpers. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to say, like, what if we could draw a line connecting, because I'm like, okay, cool, Deb, we got all the libraries, but I need to show them connected, like we're a network, right? We're connecting. And I'm like, well, what up? maybe some simple way of doing that is just draw a little line between them. There's so many, you probably can't tell. It looks like a network. So what I want to first do is say, okay, let's say library line, okay? And I'm going to 
use memo on this again because it's probably computationally intensive. Uh, and we're going to say, OK, just going to call this fancy turf function and hope it works. Um, was it line string? And then we say libraries.map d. Uh, basically, it just takes an array of latitudes and longitudes. OK, so a lot of these turf things are convenient because they like you give it latitude and longitude, and it gives you some gigantic GeoJSON object. Um, in this case, it's not that big, but I'll show you what it shows. Uh, OK, so here, oh boy, maybe if it worked. Oh, right, so oh, there's an issue here. So it's, it's, it's more temperamental than some of the other, uh, than some of the other um, libraries at length. This otherwise, or this one otherwise undefined. Okay, the turf stuff is like, oh, this was an, this was an empty array. I'm gonna just break. So, because um, yeah, who cares? So anyway, this is what the GeoJSON looks like. It's just like this geometry stuff that turf built for us. Great, thank you, turf. Uh, and now it doesn't do anything, but it's just that that J JSON object. You could copy and paste that into this website, geojson.io. Um, and you would just, it would just draw it. Or you can say, okay, let's add a layer. Let's add a quick layer and just take a look and say new GeoJSON layer. ID GeoJSON layer. Okay, data is going to be library line. Uh, we want to say like get width is going to be two. We'll say get, oh boy, am I going to remember the color? How do I do color? Now we're getting dicey, huh? It might be line color. Let's try that. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Am I going to have to refer to my thing? Maybe we can go look at the docs. That would be, be the cool way to do it, right? It's like when you're actually programming and you're like, what do the docs say? GeoJSON layer. Get line color. Okay, nailed it. Line. Oh, that's the one. This is what I need. Okay. Whoops. Let's just do that. So close. So close. Um, okay. So here we are. Oh, and uh, let's look at USA. Okay, so now we've made this super sketchy map of America, which like, hey, and you're like, look, it's got some friggin' lines going way the hell out there. And I was like, oh, I'm learning so much about America. I'm Canadian, by the way. Uh, and I was like, oh, what the hell's going on? And I guess we got some territories over here um, that got libraries that are in my data set. And I'm like, I'm gonna remove those, Deb. Sorry. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Don't touch the mic. Cardinal rule. Okay, so anyway, we have uh, we have this thing. So now we just draw in the GeoJSON, and GeoJSON is like really cool because you can get shape files and, and GeoJSON data sets online for like here's the shape of my state, here's the shape of my county, here's the shape of my city, uh, and you can just draw them specially however you want here. I'm just going to make this a little uh, more transparent so it's not a pain in the ass. And I'm going to switch to app, uh, and I'm going to switch from looking at Coolidge to looking at USA, so we don't have to keep switching back and forth. Okay, so. Now we have this, and I'm like, okay, the, the finale is the arcs, right? We gotta get to the arcs. You're like, I don't even know what you're talking about arcs. But you're gonna like them, I hope, or you're gonna be like, I should have left. Uh, I was baking on either. I'm gonna like them, so that's kind of, at least I'll get something out of it. Uh, Could have done it at home, though. Uh, okay, so library links. Um, oh, let's start off by, uh, let's import this stuff. Thank you, VS Code. Um, and let's create this, this thing. So, so I want to create a, a fake network, right? Because I'm not going to create a real network. Uh, well, I am trying to as my full-time job. But um, for this talk, I'm going to create this network called React or Library Links. I'm going to use another use memo because it's going to be computationally expensive. Uh, and we're going to say, OK, well, what's one simple way we can make a fake looking network. Well, I'm going to just take um, some fancy D3 functions again. They're not that fancy. Shuffle. This thing just randomizes an array and pairs. Uh, this thing takes an array and creates a new array where there's tuples of one in, uh, index one and two, index two and three, index three and four. And it just creates pairs of adjacent uh, elements in the array. And so I'm just going to say, similar as I did the line through each one, uh, I'm going to say, OK, let's just let's just put a, a line between adjacent things in our shuffled array. So I'm just going to say return pairs, shuffle, uh, libraries.slice. I don't want to actually modify the original array, so I slice to be safe. I'll take just the, let's say, I don't know, first 100 of these and return that. OK. Do I dare? Does this just work on its own? Do I need to add more stuff? I normally add more stuff. Oh, god. What have I done? Can't read property zero. 
Oh boy, here we go. This is what we this is what we this is what we feared. But let's just continue on and pretend nothing happened. Uh, oh, I know what we need. Okay, so get source. This is what we need. Okay, uh, D. Uh, we're going to say, so basically it needs to know it's drawing a, a link between two things, an arc between two locations. And so I'm going to say, since my, my links are just a tuple, where the, there's two libraries in, the, in an array, uh, I'm just going to say the source is the first item, uh, and the target is the second item, uh, position. And let's give them some colors. Uh, let's say this one can be green, I mean lime green, and just so it looks cool, let's do blue, why not? Um, and do we want to say get width, get width, two, or three? Yeah. Let's try that. Ah, how do you like me now? Ooh, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so we have these sweet arcs. Yeah, look at them. And you're like, you know, I like fat arcs, actually. Let's make them big. Bigger is better. Okay, yeah, boy. Or you could be like, actually, Peter, why do we only do 100? We're using WebGL. Deb, you're going to love this. Like, put them all in here. Hell! <laughs> so, um, yeah, pretty good, right? I'm like, there's our network, boy. Um, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So, so that, those are the arcs. They're cool. Uh, I want to do one final thing, which is animate them. Because like, that's when things get to the full complexity here. And then we're done. You really stuck it out. Um, but... <laughs> Let's do that quick, real quick. So what I first want is some kind of way to see if the arcs are on or off so that I can say, turn, when I turn them on, let's, let's animate. Um, we'll do the same thing we've done a million times here, which is do our incantation of using state. Okay, arcs enabled. Set arcs enabled. React uh, use state. Uh, true. Uh, const handle toggle arcs. Let's just do... Arcs enabled, not arcs enabled. Okay, we did it, we did it. We're so close to being done. I'm gonna go pet my dog. Okay, well, he'll probably be sleeping. Okay, so now we have arcs. Oh, we didn't pass that in. That's one more thing we need to do, right? So arcs enabled is equal to arcs enabled. Okay, cool. So this prop is coming in. We have this new button, right? It's gonna turn things on and off. Doesn't do anything yet. Let's go back down. Uh, let's go back down to 100 for now. Um, and I actually, you know, let's go to four. Okay. Um, and we'll just say, just to, for, just to just make sure we did it right. Oh, there you go. Boy, the days when we didn't have linting, like, those are the dark days. What a freaking brilliant thing that whoever made that was. Okay, so now we have this button, right? It's turning them on and off. And for our final act, let's make them animate. Now, it turns out these components are pretty complicated, these layers. Uh, and they use their own shaders inside the code uh, to render them. And you can go and basically download the code for the whole arcs layer and be like, yo, I'm going to edit this, and I'm just going to modify that shader. Who knows how to program shaders? Oh, just me. Oh, little guy. This guy's a boss over here. OK. Um, yeah, so, so uh, it's, it's complicated, but it's not that bad. Um, we're just going to look at what they did. Someone else. You know, the good thing about the internet is someone else probably already did it. Um, so you're just like, hey, like, I want to animate. Arcs, DeckGL. I never heard of DeckGL before coming to this talk, but like, this guy has this sweet issue where he solved it, you know? And, and so you're like, oh, thanks, bro. I don't know where it is on here. Anyway, it's on here somewhere. Oh, there it is. This one, this guy. So he posts the source code. He's like, here's how you do it. And I'm like, I love the internet. Thank you so much. You've done so much bad, but so much good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch to using this thing called the Arc Brushing Layer, which is literally just the code that this guy wrote. Um, Oh, you're not going to give me that? There you go. Uh, and so I have this locally here in my goodies folder. Uh, you can see just some modification with some weird uh, Uber DeckGL, LumenGL stuff that lets you inject code into a shader without rewriting the whole thing. But it basically just says, depending how far you are through your shader, based on this fancy coF variable, like fade it in, fade it in. Um, so we're going to switch to that. And the nice thing is, the great programmer on the internet, unnamed man, I, sh I probably should have learned, maybe not a man, an unnamed person. Um, let's just say 0 0.25. <laughs> okay, uh, I just switched to using arc brushing layer and I added this coF as a, as a prop on here. And now I'm gonna switch back to my map and we see all these partially drawn arcs, right? So now all we gotta figure out is how do we animate a number from zero to one? Okay, well we've done that. We've done that, sort of. We use React Spring for that. So. 
let's just bring in React Spring again. Okay, and I'm going to do it here. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to do it. Uh, arc coef, I'm just going to call it that. Uh, and I'm going to say if arcs are enabled, uh, there's going to be a little bit of weirdness here. Arcs are enabled, I'm going to call it one. So it's like totally, completely drawing the arcs. And if they're not enabled, then it's going to be this really weird, this small number. Um, I can't use zero because in this guy's code, uh, he said he only added stuff if it's greater than zero. So it, it just draws the whole arc if it's zero. So whatever. Um, I could modify his code to work with zero, but whatever. This number is going to be really small. Okay, spring. We've done spring before. We know how this works. Maybe we forgot, but we get spring props, right? It's going to return this. And we're going to say, oh, wait, we can't just do that because we need it in our layers. Uh, DeckGL actually supports um, doing the layers as React children as well. But they're kind of like, eh, not worth it. Slower. So, you know. They're, they're, they're more into, they know more than I do. So I'll just say, okay, I'll just follow your lead. And I'm going to make this thing use my spring props, uh, arc coef. And then I'm going to say, okay, actually, because it doesn't go all the way to zero, I'm going to be like, okay, if it's too small, like, let's just turn it off. So spring props dot arc coef greater than one e negative six, then, uh, then like stop drawing it. Okay, maybe I can just say one e nine. Okay. So in theory, oh my God, did we do it? If I click the arcs button, hey oh, we got freaking arcs drawing. We're living the dream. Someone called Deb. He's probably at home. Uh, okay, so there we go. So like you know, with a bit of sleuthing around the internet, combining a whole bunch of different libraries, I know it was a crazy amount of stuff. But when you look at the total number of lines of code for this whole example, right? We're looking at 100 something in this file and 60 in this file, and then the, the helpers that I just found on the internet, right? And we can do all kinds of cool stuff, right? We can, rent, we can animate in. We can do all the stuff while flying around. Um, by the way, it's like pretty performant. It doesn't, it doesn't stop. And even the animation, like if we go to our 100 thing, right? We can say, don't actually cut it off. It's only 25,000. But uh, I can be up here and I can be like, yo, animate those. And it's like, OK, I'll do it. Um, good old computer, man. It always does it. Every time I click the button, same thing. Um, so, so there you go. OK. That's it. Oh my God, we made it 8:30. Holy cow! It's gonna, gonna. That's it. So that was uh, my thank you slide was actually in the middle of the talk. So let's go back there. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you all for sitting through that and listening.